Hey guys, Pierre from Into Fly Fishing and welcome to our channel. Uh, today I'm going to take you through the step by step guide of how to tie Crazy Charlie. This specific color variant is called the Pillow Talk, it's very popular in the Seychelles. But the Crazy Charlie follows the exact same procedure, so you can just vary the colors according to your needs. For the materials that we'll be using, uh, the hook is a Mustad 34 double. 07. The thread I'm making use of Danville 70 denier white. Uh, usually I use 210 denier, but for this fly I'm going to use 70 denier. Uh, for the eyes, I'm going to cut two sections of a bathroom plug chain. I find that they offer uh, enough weight, especially on relatively spooky fish, and if there's not a lot of current, I use bathroom chain for the body. Some uh, crystal flash, a uh, crystal chenille. This is a uh, like a pearl white um, crystal chenille. For the underwing, I'm going to use white calf's tail. Overwing, chartreuse calf's tail. I'm going to add one strand of crystal flesh on each side of the of the wing. Then for the nose, our head of the fly, I'm going to switch over to Danville's 210 denier. This is a, like a hot orange color or hot red color rather. And then to seal the head I'm going to use some Solaris UV resin you can use any UV resin that you want the tools obviously a vise to keep the hook in place bobbin holder for the thread a pair of tying scissors a whip finishing tool and a UV torch to cure the UV resin so without further ado Let's get started on tying a Crazy Charlie. Okay guys, to get started, uh, take a hook from the packet and place it in the between the jaws of the vise and lock it in place. You want a um, level hook shank and that the hook and the bar is exposed. Uh, lock your thread in place about a third or a quarter of the shank behind the eye and wrap thread forward laying a thread foundation and then with touching turns wrapping the thread backwards so depending on the specific hook design that you're using you can stop thread foundation at the uh, start of the bend. Um, so that's done. So now cut two sections of the bead chain like that. Already did that and place the hook of the um, bead chain about a third of the length of your thread foundation behind the eye of the hook. This will make sure that or ensure that you have a large enough area between the eyes and the eye of the hook to secure your tail or wing material. So with some figure of eight wraps, just secure that. And then just make sure that it's level, it's straight, so that the fly rides correct in the water. That should be enough. So leave your thread right behind the eyes. Cut off a section of the cactus chenille or crystal chenille and tie it in on top of the hook shank. So, and wrap the thread backwards while manipulating the chenille to stay on top of the hook. Wrap. 
Now take your tying scissors again and just cut off that little piece of excess. That. Just kind of lock this in the spring so it doesn't bother me again. And then leave your thread hanging just in front of the bead chain eyes. Now run, just form a body with your chenille. forward. When you reach the eyes, just do a figure, a couple of figure eights, two figure of eights, like that, and secure the chenille. So this will just give a body for the fly. Um, some other very effective material is um, vinyl rib, uh, clear vinyl rib, um, or even just thread some patterns I've seen, I've seen guides even leave the um, shank bare on fish that are quite um, spooky. Uh, a bare shank will also allow the fly to sink very fast. Also if you have a very thin thread body that will allow the fly to sink very fast. So at this stage um, we need to flip the fly around as the weight will cause the hook to ride point up and the rest of the fibers will be tied on the bottom so they will ride on the top of the fly. So we'll turn it around. If you have a rotary vise, just flip it around. If you don't have a rotary vise, remove the fly from the hook and just pop it in like that. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to flip my rotary vise like that. Great. So now we cut off a couple of fibers from the white calf tail. What you're looking for are fibers that have crinkle in them. It's like a nice wavy look and you don't want to add too much. If you add too much it will prevent the fly from sinking properly. Um, you want a nice sparsely dressed fly um, that mimics uh, the natural life form in the water. So that's fine. You can pinch it in on the tip, just pull out any base fibers like so, and measure. So you want the longest fibers to be slightly longer than the total length of the hook. So that would be perfect. Pinch it in place and make two or three wraps around it and then loose wraps around it and as soon as it's cinched against the hook then you can pull it tight with a couple of wraps. Then pull the wing forward and make two wraps behind it then two more wraps in front of it. Now that's secure. Now cut off the wing excess like so. Just keep in mind that you must make sure to keep the eye of the hook clear of any material. There's nothing more frustrating than having to deal with material or resin in, in the eye of the hook when there's schools of bonefish around you and you only have one fly left. And at this stage I want to add some flesh. This is also totally optional. Some fish spook with too much flesh. I'm just going to add one strand on each side, so I cut a long strand. I'm going to fold it in half, like so. So, and then the loop that I created in this hand, I'm going to pop over the eye of the hook and pull upwards, like so. Now I'm going to run the thread over it to secure it. And before I come to the base of the wing, I'm going to leave it, leave the two fibers and splay them on opposite sides of the wing. I found that this is the fastest way to do it and if you don't tie them in completely up to the wing you, you can still manipulate them on either side like so. Pull them tight and just secure them. There you have flash on either side of the wing. Now pull the flash upwards and trim slightly longer or the same length as the wing. 
just measure it again to make sure that you did it right and that's the wing or the crystal flash to finish the wing off you're going to add some chartreuse calf cell once again you're looking for nice crinkly fibers not too much then hold the tip hold the tip of the fibers and just pull out any shorter fibers so hold it in place measure against the underwing same length as the underwing pinch it in place one loose wrap one slightly tighter and then just go tighter and tighter like that now you can cut off the excess short truce tail or wing like so and just cover the material slightly and take your whip finishing tool and make a whip finish with the white thread cut the thread off now you can either have another bobbin with your red thread in it or just switch over the thread at this stage lock the red thread in front of the eyes cut off the excess and with making sure that the thread is flat just form a head um, you want the head to be formed all the way from the base of the uh, wing and then wrap forward creating a neat head and every now and then just spinning the bobbin in the opposite direction just to flatten the thread that and then do two whip finishes. Pull tight between each whip finish. Like so and cut off the thread. Now take your UV resin or nail varnish and just apply a thin coating. Make sure that you cover all the exposed thread, like so. Close your UV resin bottle. If you leave it open, it will start curing and cause you all sorts of trouble. And then cure the UV resin with your torch. Like so. And there you have it, a uh, crazy Charlie variant called the Pillow Talk. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to our channel um, to keep updated with regular releases we're doing on, on fly tying tutorials. Until we see each other again, cheers from Into Fly Fishing.